Hello, greetings to you in Jesus' name. Now today is a wonderful day uh, because we are celebrating, or Christians are celebrating all over the world as a resurrection day of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I spoke yesterday about the Passion Week and I told you that Holy Spirit wants us to know that instead of going through the suffering of what Christ went through, we need to appreciate the day because what it, what Jesus did for us, based on that, our sins are forgiven and we are going to heaven. Or heaven is ours, our eternal home. Secondly, our Father also wants to tell us that our mourning must turn to gladness and rejoicing because we know our sins are forgiven and someday heaven will be our eternal home. Now today speaking about the resurrection day you know I have given I already gave a message but I'm trying with this new uh, thing new what you call platform I'm trying to come from this because we have been facing problem with our mobile okay so let me try this and then I'll post it and let us see what is the response Holy Spirit told me that uh, the day we are celebrating today uh, is what we call the Resurrection Sunday. Uh, instead of speak, telling uh, Easter Sunday, we can uh, we can say it as a Resurrection Day. Uh, so, so because I, I, as I found out from the Bible, there is no word called Easter in the Bible. Uh, so, we let us use this uh, new name or this right name which Holy Spirit gave us as the Resurrection Day. So praise God and today is my one of my favorite Sundays of the year. It's, day, it's the day we celebrate the risen Savior. Aren't you glad that Jesus rose from the dead? You know, one thing I want to tell you is this. You see that every other religion celebrates the birth and observes the death of their leader. But Christianity is the only religion, if I say religion, I'm just borrowing this word, that celebrates the birth, observes the death and proclaims the resurrection of our leader, our Lord Jesus Christ. Only one tomb is empty. That is Jesus' tomb. Praise God. That is why we Christians celebrate the resurrection and the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't celebrate his death. We celebrate his life because those he had, though he had died, he rose up and is alive today, never to die again. Satan couldn't stop him death couldn't keep him and the grave couldn't hold him on the third day when the angel rolled the stone away jesus came out triumphant over death hell and the grave he shook his fist at the grave and said behold i am he that lives and was dead and is alive forevermore and i hold the keys of death and hell praise god praise god for that he rose up never to die again and the angel said Jesus is not here for he is risen in Matthew 28 5 to 6 we read this so he is risen death couldn't hold him now today's message is I want to show you if there was no resurrection and what if there was resurrection what if there was no resurrection if Jesus wouldn't if Jesus didn't rise from the dead or Jesus was able to come out of the dead or the father couldn't raise him from the dead. So what is the difference between that? We read this in 1 Corinthians 15, 14 to 19. So let me give you some reasons. First, because Jesus rose from the dead, we are forgiven of all our sins. That's the first thing. You know, in verse 17, 1 Corinthians 14, 17, 15, 17, sorry, it says, if Christ has not been raised, then you are in still in your sins look at this if christ has not been raised then you are still in your sins praise god for that if jesus wouldn't have been raised from the dead we would have been in sin and the ways of sin is death eternal separation from god forever praise god he rose from the dead and now because he was raised from the dead our sins are forgiven if you say you're still in sin, then you're saying that 
Christ has not been raised from the dead. See, the basis we say that our sins are forgiven is because Christ has been raised from the dead. So since Christ has been raised from the dead, we are not still in our sins. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So the right knowledge of God's word will free you. That's very important. Jesus, by being raised from the dead, changed us from dead people into living people. We were dead in sins, but Jesus made us alive. You know, what heaven sees is not your good works. Then see your performance, your merit, your worthiness. What heaven sees is, do you have the life of Jesus or not? Praise the Lord. Heaven sees whether you have the life of Jesus or not. That's what the Bible says. He that had the Son had life. And he that doesn't have the Son does not have life. So the question is whether you have life or not. That's all. It's not how good you are. How many times you fast and pray. These are not good works that save us. It's the good works of Jesus that saves us when you believe. That, that faith is, comes from Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. Our faith is not based on our works, good works. No. Then we can boast if our faith is based on our good works and we are helping the poor, giving food to the poor and doing this and doing that good works. Then our faith is in our own selves. We are making our own selves God. We are making ourselves our own saviors. So if, if, if you are looking to Jesus and based on his good works, based on the cross and the resurrection event, that's the right kind of faith which will free you from every bondage. You will walk in freedom. Secondly, Verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. See, look at this. If the Lord would have been raised from the dead, our preaching was useless. A dead man preaching a dead message. Oh my. Our preaching was in vain. Means it's like a dead man. We are dead people without Christ. It is his life we are living today. Because this is divine life. So if the Lord would have not been raised from the dead, we are no spiritual life. We are only natural life. Then it's like dead people preaching a dead message because Jesus did not rise up. But today we are living pre preachers. We are living people preaching a living message of a living Savior, of a living God. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. Since Christ has been raised, our preaching is not in vain. Is the living preaching, the living message of the living God. Now we can trust Him because He's alive. He won't let us down. He'll always be there with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. We are hope because He rose from the dead. So the death of Jesus proves His love for us. And the resurrection proves His power over every enemy of our life. So the life... I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 says that. So, today we preach not a dead message, not a message without hope. We are living people preaching the living message of the living Savior who had died and rose up. So, our message is living. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but it's the power of God to them that believe. Look at this. Next is verse 15. If Christ has not been raised, we are found to be misrepresenting God. Means we are false witnesses. Praise God for that. Now today we are true witnesses because Jesus rose from the dead. Your witnessing is living. Your witnessing is true. That's so powerful. You are a true witness. Who are the true witnesses? The true witnesses are those who believe in the resurrections of our Lord Jesus Christ. Since Christ has been raised, the apostles and we who preach the gospel are not false witnesses about the work of God, but the true witnesses. So be happy. You are the true witness of God. 
Next point, verse 19. If Christ has not been raised, then we are of all men most to be pitied, the Bible says. Ah. But since Christ has been raised, we are not to be pitied. We have not wasted our life following him. Our religious leader, our Lord Jesus Christ, if he was dead, then we had no hope. If he couldn't rise, how can you, he make us to rise again? But since Christ has been raised, we have hope. So if there was no resurrection, then we might, then we might as well eat and drink for tomorrow we die. If there's no resurrection, no use of living for God because let's eat and drink and make merry. That's what the people say. Eat and drink and marry because tomorrow anyhow we're going to die. But if Jesus was, if Jesus was not raised from the dead, then this is all the life we would be living. And let us make the best use of this time. Let's eat and make fun and be happy. But praise God, resurrection as solar of death. Now we have new hope of living. Next point. Those who have fallen asleep are alive. So there's the longing now in our hearts that we shall live forever in joy. Paul says in verse 18 that because Christ is raised, those who have fallen asleep in him, those who have died in faith have not perished. You know, those who have, who have died before us, they are not perished if they have believed in Jesus. But if they have not believed in Jesus, they are perished. Romans 6.23 says, For the ways of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life. We have received the gift of life because of Jesus, because we have believed so, those who have believed and have died, they are alive. They will live forever. They live the way Christ lives. They will enter into the joy of the Master. Our loved ones in Christ are secure because of the resurrection. And we are of all people most blessed. Because when you go to heaven, we are going to meet them. They are all going to come and welcome us with a grand celebration. There is a great, great welcome home celebration. Our death is gain. Our death is gain. Not all death are gain. Not all death are blessed. The Bible does not say all death are blessed. All those who die are blessed. No. Only those who have believed in the Savior and have the life of God in them, only their death is blessed. And their works follow them. Whatever good works you have done for the Lord in the name of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord will follow you. But if you've done it for yourself, it will the fire will burn all those works which are not done for his glory so our loved ones in heaven are secure praise God next verse 18 if Christ has not been raised then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished look at this if the Lord had not been raised from the dead then those who have died even in Christ have perished see because of his resurrection because Jesus was raised from the dead, the dead in Christ have not perished. Ha, beautiful. They have not perished. Paul says in verse 18 that because Christ is raised, those who have fallen asleep in him, those who have died in faith have not perished. You're going to see them in heaven. They are alive. They live forever. They live the way the Christ, the Christ lives. They'll enter into the joy of the master. So our loved ones in Christ are secure because of the resurrection of Christ and we are of all people most blessed. Now, Satan is totally defeated and every demon knows it that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the devil and all his demons are defeated. I can imagine the scene when Jesus bowed his head and died on the cross that Satan and all his demons, they gathered in hell for a great victory celebration, jumping around Shouting with great excitement. We did it. We did it. I told you we could defeat him. Now we are in control. Now we can do whatever we want. Jesus went into that hell. You know, 
hell means differently i'll teach you later on so they thought now they are in control of jesus satan must have laughed sarcastically and say, said to his demons aren't you glad you followed me the leader aren't you glad you revolted against the heavens i told you it is worth it but look at this what happened in the midst of the celebration one of the demons notices a man coming from a long distance they can't figure out who is it they begin to curiously look and try to figure out who it is is marching towards them with boldness and with a determination that they have never seen before as he gets closer one of the demons finally recognizes who it is he screams in terror oh no it is our worst nightmare he's back ah they thought they killed him he's back they thought they killed him he is back here comes the son of god is the lamb of god the word they thought they defeated him they're controlling him they killed him but god raised him from the dead and jesus looking right into satan's eyes said satan i hate to spoil your victory party but i think you're celebrating it little soon you may have knocked me down but you sure did knock me out and it's not over until i say it's over that satan says listen jesus you're on my place now you don't have a chance down here you're surrounded by the demons by my demons we are going to tear you apart jesus just smiles and grabs satan by the ne neck and begins to slowly drag him down the mob of screaming demons bruised and battered because he wanted to make sure that every single demon saw very clearly that jesus was indeed the undisputed champion of all time the bible says in colossians 2:15 that god disarmed the principalities and powers raged against him us and he made a bold display and a public example of satan's defeat everyone knows satan's defeat jesus did not do it hidingly but openly jesus did not want there to be any question or controversy whatsoever as to who the enemy was he didn't want there to be any doubt in anybody's mind it was jesus everything and satan nothing every demon in hell saw this one translation says jesus brought satan to not in other words he brought satan to zero satan didn't even score he didn't even begin to score this was a shut out case you can't get any more defeated than that utterly defeated it is jesus destroyed the works of the devil reduced to zero the effects of the devil on the lives of all who will acknowledge jesus as his lord as the lord and savior and master the good news today is that satan is eternally defeated there's not ever going to be a rematch finished it is forever settled jesus christ is the king of kings and the lord of lords the reason we can celebrate today is because that grave could not hold jesus satan did his best but his best just wasn't enough they put jesus in that tomb bound up and wrapped up on the friday afternoon but thank god on sunday morning it was a different story he burst out of the grave clothes shook his fist at the grave and said behold look i am he that liveth and i was dead but behold i am alive forevermore and i have got the keys of death and hell amen so the good news about the resurrection is that we don't have to be afraid of the devil and the demons you are all washed in the blood of jesus the force of darkness has scared to death of you every time they see you they see the blood of jesus that's all over you and they are terrified they run away they don't walk away they run away that reminds them of what jesus did to their leader they know it they'll never forget that day when jesus dragged satan or drugged satan 
down to the corridors of hell, humiliating him and embarrassing him. And now the Bible says, if we will just submit ourselves to God, if we give our lives to God, we can resist the devil and he will flee from us. So as a born again believer, none of us have any business living a life of fear and defeat and misery. Some of you today are waiting on God to help you get out of your mess. But God is waiting on you to rise up and begin to exercise the authority. And that rightfully belongs to you. Satan so is not going to do get any more defeated. He's defeated, he's as defeated as he can be. It's an insult to God for us to live a life of defeat and misery. And whine and complain. After all, Jesus has gone through on our behalf. Every one of us needs to understand, fully recognize how to exercise authority over the devil and demon forces. Don't allow Satan to defeat you. Some of you maybe are learning to live with addictions and all kinds of pain and mental torment and all kinds of heart heartache. Friends, it doesn't have to be that way. The price has already been paid. He took the punishment of our sin to break the power of sin and to free us from the penalty of sin. But do you know what? You have to go do your part. You have to, got to start resisting the devil and tell him to get out of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. You're not fighting for victory. You're placed on the victory ground. So this is the message I wanted to give you today about what if the Lord would have not been raised and what if the Lord uh, was raised. I'll give you another message next time. But Praise God. You have won every battle because of Jesus. You don't have to fear the devil at all. He's totally defeated forever. And he can never rise up. I told you in the morning, this morning, that Satan has no armor, no weapons. No weapons. Jesus stripped off every medal he had. He stripped off everything. All the power. That's what the Lord said. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the devil and nothing by any means can harm you. You have the weapon and your weapon is the most powerful. You have the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Take the sword of the Holy Spirit that's the word of God. In fact, you are covered. Satan is not covered at all. He has no armor. He has no sword. He can do nothing. There's only one thing to come against you that is deception and lies. If you stick to the truth, he can do nothing. He just removes you from truth to believe his lies so that he can harm you. If you stick to the truth, he can do nothing. He knows it. His time is over. And the time has come. We enter the kingdom age. We are already in the kingdom age where God's reign and rule will come. And when the demons go out, that means the kingdom of God has come down. We have already started the kingdom of God on this earth. So many saints have been praying, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. We are already in that time now. We can do nothing. God has already done it. We are in it. Now let us use the power that God has given us. Preach the gospel. Okay, so that's all for today. And uh, I'll come back again and I'll see how this works, how this video works. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. God bless you.